No fucking around on this one. Let's get started. The ship is honestly one of the harder areas, which is kind of ironic because uh, this, this game just doesn't let up compared to Metal Gear. Like every area in it is difficult for various reasons, and you're about to see why as this game progresses. Fortunately, there's a couple of this level is actually pretty short as far as uh, as far as levels in Snake's Revenge go. We'll be taking extensive advantage of that uh, of that punching and killing people to get supplies thing. An interesting note about the uh, about the general uh, setup with hostages and uh, and officers in this one is that no matter how many you get, you cannot get three stars before the boss. Um, or after the boss, for that matter. You will automatically get to three stars no matter how few stars you were before when you get to the next area. When we, ex when we finally beat the ship level. Oh, there we go. Ammo. The ship's pretty straightforward, though. It can leave you with a bit to wander around in if you're not sure what's going on. I think this compartment has grenades in it. It does. Grenades are a good necessity here, mostly because you're going to be using them a lot against the boss. This guy is one of the first cases of anguish in the game. He tells you that Metal Gear has no weak spot. Now, this guy's dialogue says, let's destroy the ship and ammo dump. The original dialogue was, or at least what it was supposed to read, was that, uh, he, was that because the it was too difficult to destroy the, uh, the Metal Gear tank, it would be easier to just sink the ship with it on it by destroying the ammo dump. Actually, a pretty critical piece of information as I stop and think about it. Alright, we should have enough supplies to take on the boss now. kind of interesting because the ship level is really straightforward compared to some of the others. Like, the compound's also pretty straightforward, but it's a lot more straightforward than, like, any area in Metal Gear was. I think that's my big problem with Snake's Revenge. All the level design is really kind of linear. There's no, sw there's no wandering about, there's no, you know, alternate ways to do something. You just have a specific route you gotta take. Which is a big contrast to the original, which was actually pretty open-ended. Even the MSX one was kind of open-ended. And the commander tells us to ask us if we're alright, and that he will see us soon. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not even going to try to guess what the hell he was originally saying there. Here we got our first new weapon. Claymore Mines. Yes, this is where they originated, and they were used in every Metal Gear game after this. With, I think, the exception of Metal Gear 2. Claymore Mines in this game work a little differently than most. They, uh... Instead of being, you know, plant and they explode when an enemy goes through a certain area of them, in this game, you plant them, and you detonate them of the remote detonation type, and they'll detonate in the direction you're facing. Which is actually pretty awesome. They can actually inflict a lot of damage and are very, very good against swarms of enemies. Bear Max out. 
we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of those guys later. And here's our next boss. The Grenadier Unit. Here are three graves for you. <laughs> this is actually probably the easiest boss in the game. In spite of that, you really can't get lazy, and you have to stay moving. One of these grenades will deplete more than half of your life bar. I will probably get one shot killed if these guys manage to hit me. Makes me on retrospect wonder why I didn't use a ration, but more on that later. The most effective weapon against these guys are your grenades. Unfortunately, you're not gonna have more you're not gonna have enough grenades to kill more than two of them. See, one nice thing I like about Snake's Revenge's boss fights is you have to use actual strategy and actual moving around when you fight the bosses in it. There's no fucking around like there was in the Metal Gear bosses. Metal Gear bosses, it was usually just hide in their blind spot and shoot the shit out of them. In this game, you actually have to up and pretty, you know, badassly handle these guys. And there's a lot of them that are pretty damn tough. Of note, if you step into any of those holes, it's instant death, so please avoid doing so. And he's dead. Again, honestly the easiest boss in the game, but actually pretty difficult. Now we have keycard 3, so we can fully explore the ship. Well, not quite. There's a couple of other little accessories we need before we can properly explore the ship. But we have the resources to actually access those. Kind of funny, I'm usually in much worse shape by this, by this point. I figure I may as well... No. There you go, food. Now here we got a new weapon, though this isn't really a weapon. A flare gun. You remember how in the original Metal Gear, you had to use the flashlight to access the, bla the blacked out rooms, and there wasn't really any use of it if you, could, if you actually circumvented it in the NES version? In this game? Oh god, you better have this weapon. It's possible to miss it. And if you do, god help you. Because there's a lot of dark rooms that you encounter later. Each flare will permanently light up one room. Also, we get another useful item here: the metal, the, the mine detector. Unlike the previous game where it illuminated the entire screen's mines, this one will only reveal the mines that are right in front of you. It's still a vitally useful item. Especially with where we're going. For now, we go back to the first floor. These elevators always used to piss me off because I could never get them to work right. I kind of figured out how they worked and it always used to be a problem. God damn it! That guard's in a really bad spot. Awesome. Each flare bomb gives you three flares. Naturally, we want to take this opportunity to stock up. Because believe me, these things are going to be useful later on. I think that should be enough. If I did my math right, that should be good us ten. Awesome. That restocks our truth gas. Again, 
Truth gas is not something we normally have to stock up on, but it's handy to have it now so you don't have to go out and search for it later. Also, unlike Metal Gear, where the max rank was 4, in Snake's Revenge, the max rank is 6. So there's actually a lot of reasons to keep, you know, looking for for guys to capture and and to, and for POWs to save. While we're here, we're going to stock up on, uh, on grenades. Even if I have to restock later, and I know I will, because of the third star, this will this will come in handy in case... Mostly in case I have to deal with some stuff, but mostly because it's these are incredibly useful in the compound area ahead, and you'll see why. Now that I think about it, the compound area has two of the toughest enemies in the game, which is kind of ironic because otherwise it's... It's a very quiet area. You don't encounter any enemies in it except for the, the the two enemies that you can encounter there. I think only one we're actually going to see in this run. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's only that one. We are going to see the Man Maker, though. It's one area in the game where that just absolutely drives everyone insane. Like, I'm willing to bet that 60% of the hate for the side-scrolling areas comes from that one area. And now we're in the depths of the ship. Now we've... The, the guys mentioned earlier that they have Metal Gear here, but... They don't really get into why this one shipment's so important. One Metal Gear shouldn't make any difference at all. Well, you were about to find out the answer to that. They have about a dozen of these things in here. All ready to be shipped to various third world nations all around the world to threaten global stability. The giant reveal of Metal Gear this is not, but it's still a pretty cool idea. And here's the ammo dump. Alright, let's make sure we have everything we need. Set the explosives. This is a this is a timed area. You gotta run like hell, and you gotta make it out of here before the ship sinks. Um, if you get confused about where to go, there's actually a radar map included with your transceiver, which will tell you the exact location to go, but only if you're on the right floor, i.e., the first. This is a very simple er area, and really, if you know the right area to go to, it's possible to just do this very, very quickly with about 20 or 30 seconds remaining. About 20 seconds remaining is the average. And there we go. And with that, the ship has sank. Metal Gear is destroyed. But we have confirmed the existence of Metal Gear 2. And now Nick is missing. Contact your person at the enemy base. Oh, Anguish. Alright, stay tuned for part 3.